Hi everyone, it's Nona Grace and I'm from Western New York. Today's video is just going to be random thoughts. The first thing I said to Jim this morning was, why is the grass greener on the other side? Meaning, I was looking at the grass actually where the chickens had been pecking, but when I thought about it, I thought, gee, you know, a lot of people think that life is better for someone else or it's more exciting. And I started watching a few videos on why the grass is greener or why we think the grass is greener. So I watched a few of those before I actually started doing my comments. And a lot of them have to do with you think that social media shows everybody having a grand old time and you think you should be having a grand old time. Well, those pictures are probably just pictures because I can stage a real good time Make it look like I'm having a ball in a snapshot and then go back to, ugh. Yes, we can all do that. And that that's what we have to remember, that a lot of times that's what you're seeing. You're not really seeing the day-to-day -day or the all the time. But yes, my grass is not green where the chickens were. They had been plucking it to, to where he actually moved the fence so that they'd have more green grass. And somebody else commented or thought or asked the question or it was in a video. I don't remember where I heard it, but they wanted to know, does the grass grow in the winter? Well, I don't think it does because if it did, we'd have to mow it. In the summer, in the spring, well, in the spring when, when the snow is gone and the temperatures rise, our grass grows here, but maybe your grass grows where you are. I don't know. But we don't have to mow in the winter, but we do have a lot of mud and we do have snow and the grass just stops. Goes so, dormant. Goes dormant, yes. So if you think the grass is greener on the other side, it's not. You have the greenest grass under your feet that you should have. And if you take care of your lawn or your area or your life, yours is the best. That was my thought this morning, what I wake up with. <laughs> okay, then I was thinking, gee, I wonder how long other people work on their videos to, to do their comments. I sit there for quite a while, and when a lot of times my computer will actually shut down. I have an old computer, and it will shut down. It says, you've worked long enough. I'm hot. I'm tired. Just go get a cup of coffee. So that's what I do. I get up and I stretch a little bit and I might crochet a little bit on my afghan that I'm making. And then I go back and I sit down and I do a few more comments, but it takes a while. Then I decide when I'm done, then I watch, up, then I come back into the kitchen and I Chromecast to the TV. And that's where I've been using the voice activation. And it's so funny because we were talking about it today, and I said, see, it says what I says, and it did said, and it wrote down, see, it says what I says. <laughs> it was, it was like, now I gotta delete this, I gotta it back, because I don't know how to highlight and delete real quick with um, the iPad, but that's what I was doing, I was doing that, and also I watched today Natalie B, she was talking about, she had a few things that fell behind her radiator, and some of them were magnets, and a radiator is steel, so of course the magnet's going to stick to it. But I told her she could use the mechanical fingers, and I said I would show a mechanical finger. This is the mechanical finger. It's a real thin, flexible, it's quite long. I don't know how long it is, maybe 24 inches, I don't know. And it's got a little handle on the end. And you pull this little thing, and when you pull this little thing on the other end, some little fingers come out. See? That's why it's called a mechanical finger. And it can grab whatever it is that fell behind your radio. You just stick it down. And it's real flexible. It's, it's a flexible thing, so you don't have to worry about if you I can't move it around or something. But it's stiff enough to still go to the direction you want. And you just pull your little, pull your little thing, and yeah. It's like it makes me think of the um, House of Horrors or whatever it is <laughs> that movie where the plant was going to eat somebody. I don't know what the name of the musical was. That's also called a mechanic's finger. Oh, mechanic's finger? Yeah. Oh, it's not a mechanical finger. <laughs> oh, 
it's that also. Mechanic's finger. It, uh, it goes by many, many, many names, names. But this, this has saved me a lot of times. I have actually stuck this down into a drain because I don't want to use a snake and go like this and then close it and pull up and I've got a gob of hair coming out of the top. Oh my goodness. The things you'll find. <laughs> you don't, it looks like a dead rat, but it wasn't. But it, you can use it for a lot of things. Or I drop something behind something and I can't, I can't get in there. I can't move it. So, but I want to get it, and, and, or in my little radiators, I have the baseboard heaters, and sometimes you can't quite get your fingers in there without getting cut. And you need something that's going to grip it. We actually used this on my mother's car when my mom was driving, and she forgot how to turn off the engine, but she'd lock the doors. Thank goodness she had the car that didn't have um, electronic locks. <laughs> and, she left the and she left the window down about this much so we could sneak this down in get to the the little lock thing and pull it up and unlock the door I asked her where the other keys were and she she had no clue she even had a second set of keys well she hid them so that nobody could find them and so nobody had them but she used to leave the car running and I'd come home from work and there'd be the car running it would run until it ran out of gas but her tank was always full, so it would have taken a very long time. So thank goodness we had these little mechanical fingers to do that. Now, I want to show you how I crochet again, only so I will do it real slow, so that if anybody wants to try to learn to crochet, I was going to show you with my left hand too, but you know, I can't do it with my left hand anymore. I used to be able to crochet with my left hand, but I've gotten to where I, I have to practice and I don't feel like practicing. So I will show you with the right hand and I will do it real slow so that you can see. And hopefully, if you are left-handed, maybe you can learn to do it right-handed. My sister is left-handed and she does everything right-handed except eat and write. Well, she can eat with her right hand, but she, she writes with her left hand. And she does everything else with her right hand, even though she's left-handed. And you know, you use more of your brain. You're in the right side of your brain. <laughs> right. You're in the right, right brain. If you're left-handed. If you're left-handed. We're in the left brain if we're right-handed. So I will show, go to that now. Let's go to the crocheting. Okay, I'm going to do this with a really large hook. It's a K hook. It's a very big one. And I'm going to do it with two different colors. I'm going to use red first, and then I will use the yellow, just in case you can see. I don't know which color you can see better. But I don't know how to make, you know, if you've watched a few, they wrap it around somehow, and then they, they stick it through or something. I don't know. I can't do it, see? I don't know how to do it. So when I make my slip knot, <laughs> I put it over the thing and I bring it around and I pretend I'm, and I bring my thread around and then I just, and there I've got a slip knot, see? There's my slip knot. Or you can do, this is another way that I do a slip knot. I just go like this, like this, and like this. I know it's the hard way, but for those of you, but it's so easy. But if you want to know how to make a slip knot, Google it, and they'll show you an easy way. But this is how I do it. I, I start like I'm, like I'm crocheting, and I've got my slip knot. Okay, then I would, this is a chain. We're just going to do a chain. You're swinging the thre thread over, or the yarn over, and you're pulling it through one loop. That is a chain. Now, I will switch to the way other people crochet, where they they hold it like, they hold it like, well, something like this, and they will bring it around and pull it through. Bring it around, pull it through. So there is that way, but see my, I don't know if my tension will stay the same or not. Okay, and after you've done that, 
you're gonna single crochet and we'll show you how to single crochet so we're gonna go we're gonna skip one because I don't want to go into that one just because it depends on your project you stick it through yarn over pull through one yarn over and you pull through two and you've got a, one of your first single crochet then you go into your next next stitch which is right there yarn over pull through one yarn over pull through two and then your next stitch yarn over pull through one yarn over and pull through two now that's a single crochet I'll do one more put the yarn near the needle in put the yarn over pull through yarn over and pull through both hoops okay there's there's your single crochet now to do double crochet you put the yarn over first and you put it through the loop yarn over pull through one loop this time yarn over pull through two loops yarn over and you finish pulling through the last two loops and it's a taller stitch and you're working into your chain now when I was learning how to crochet the skein you know how big a skein is this is a skein my mother would have us do a chain with this whole thing so it was miles long it was so long and so then we'll do one more double yarn over and you stick it through the next loop in the chain yarn over yarn over and pull through two yarn over and pull through one okay now we're going to switch to way other people like to crochet you put the yarn over oops pull through the hole yarn over pull through one yarn over pull through two see i'm very slow at this one but that's how you learn when you're learning you are slow and the tent oh that looks bad there there's the whole loop okay i've got two two stitches left two chains left one the first row is always the hardest row too because once you have more material to hang on to it gets easier and there's one more one more stitch left so we'll go through that probably somebody out there is laughing at how awkward this is yes it is if I do it this way pull it through the last two okay then you chain two one two and you turn your work okay now you can see the stitches a lot easier see there's a stitch 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 they're all there so you turn your work put the yarn over and because it's a chain we're going to skip one and go into the next and we're going to go through both of these if we wanted a ridge on our work we'd go through the front one or the back one we wouldn't go through both but we want it to be level so we're going to go through both see the more you practice the better you get i guess and then the next one is this one so we're going to go through the top go through that hear my wrist creaking and the last one okay now I'm going to switch to my way because that is so awkward I will yarn over and there's the two and I pull it through pull it through pull it through yarn over and the next one This is so much easier for me because this is the way I do it. When I do my pop tap purse, purses, I have to do it the other way though a lot of times because the material is stiffer and I can't quite 
um, get the needle in there to crochet it. And there's the last one. I'm going to go on that one. Yeah. And then you see, and then you would chain. If you're double crocheting, you chain twice. If you're single crocheting, you chain once and turn your work and start again. Skip the first one and go into the next one. And you would just keep going. Okay, now we're going to switch to the yellow. Because I don't know which color looks up looks easier for you to see. And because I don't know how to make the other slip knot, I'll do it my way. I go around. Put it over. Pull it through like I'm crocheting and there's my slip knot. And then a chain, one, two, we'll do a chain of ten, two, three, four, five, I better go slow, six, seven, and see with me holding it, I flip the, I, I hold the um, loop that's coming on so that they stay, and there's ten, ten stitches, and there's the top side. So you can see them all. A lot looser when you went slower. Well, they're loose because I'm using a very big hook. If I used a smaller hook, these would be tighter. Okay, now we're going to do a double crochet yarn over. Skip the first one, go into the second one. I'm doing with a very, very large hook. The larger the hook, the looser the work. And the larger the hook, the easier it is to do when you're learning. If you have a tiny skinny hook, it's so hard to see the the stitches, the loops, that you can't tell where you are. But just if you practice the tr chain, and then when you get the chain done, then you can do the double crochet or single crochet. And once you know how to do these two things, you can make almost anything. do one more and then I'm done for this and that's and that's what it looks like that's a double crochet and this has double and single on it these are single down here and then it went to double but that's, that's it all done <laughs> you got a good look? <laughs> no, no. Well, I hope that is helpful for those of you that want to crochet. I don't know how to make the slip knot the way they show in a lot of videos. So you just Google how to make a slip knot and they will show you how to make it. I've always just done it on the hook. I don't even I don't even do the other one that I showed you where it was with the hand. It's rare that I do that. The only time I do that is if I'm making a slip knot to put around something that isn't going to be crocheted. So that's it for tonight. I hope you all had a great night and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.